eat more chicken skin. It's good for you, it's good for your skin, it's good for your heart, it's good for your health, and it tastes good too. Even add a little bit of extra salt in there, despite what the authorities say. Because in the 1950s, some people highlighted that fat was a major cause of heart attacks and strokes, or at least they thought it was back then. Nowadays, we look at the research and we see that the sugar industry was actually saying, hey, look at fat, look at fat, so that we didn't pick on and actually target the rightful number one enemy, which is sugar. And everyone said saturated fat's the big killer, and they still haven't got over that myth. Now, a little bit of saturated fat, some saturated fat in your diet is absolutely fantastic. And that's what you're going to get in your chicken skin. And along with all that, you're going to get lots of other nutrients and benefits. Well, let's have a look at some of the simple parts of it. So when you have chicken skin, first of all, a third of it is protein. So a third of that physical component there is might take all the water out and so on. You've got a third of it is protein. We'll come back to that in a moment. You've got two thirds fat. Now of those two thirds fat, you've got about 50%, and these percentages will vary a lot between chicken breeds, chicken types, the way you cook, whole raft of things. 50% monounsaturated fats, 20% or so on polyunsaturated fats, and give or take 30% of saturated fats. So it's 30% of two thirds. So it's a relatively, yeah, it might be a little high, but it's still a relatively small amount on the chicken skin, if you think about what you're getting there. And what's great is you've got a great mix of these. Your body actually needs saturated fats. It just doesn't need huge quantities, and it doesn't get it in chicken skin. And because you've got that, and the mono and the polyunsaturated, but in addition, you've got vitamin A. And we're not getting enough vitamin A in our diet, in our nutrition nowadays, because it's a fat-soluble vitamin. Everyone's been told to stay away from it. That was one of the reasons that a long time ago that everyone used to supplement with cod liver oil. And one of the ingredients in cod liver oil is vitamin A. It's also got iron in good concentrations, a little bit of calcium, and a, a very small amount of potassium. But these minerals are actually essentially essential for good health and well-being. And so you're getting this great mix of nutrients in there. But let's come back to collagen. And that third of the protein that you've got in the chicken skin 70% is made up of collagen, type 1 and type 3. Now, collagen goes to form skin, cartilage, bone, tendons, arteries, uh, gut lining, respiratory lining, esophageal lining, the lining inside your mouth, all of the connective tissue. It's the most abundant protein in your body. And it just goes, even in, in your bone, everyone thinks, oh, it's minerals. You take the minerals out, 80 90% of the bones are actually made up of collagen. And a fact that scare, might scare you a little bit is that literally we lose about 1% of our collagen in our body every year after about 20. And as a result, we need to build more collagen into our diet. Here the authorities saying, don't have collagen, it's gonna make you fat. Well, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna prove it doesn't, it's the exact opposite. So we've got all of these which we know, and as we age, our skin deteriorates, our cartilage gets our bone gets thinner, tendons, arteries, and even our gut lining plays up. So why is it so good? Well, the collagen is made up of two amino acids, one called glycine plus proline and its cousin hydroxyproline. Those together literally make up the collagens which form most of these. And there's, there's a couple of other types I'll mention in a minute. And the great thing about these is when we consume chicken skin, our body digests it. Now, the critical thing about digesting any protein is you have to have strong acid, a pH of two, because the proteins are really bound together tightly. And when you get a pH of two, it opens them up and allows the enzymes like pepsin to digest it. Hydrochloric acid, by the way, stomach acid has a pH of one, very, very strong. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't have that pH. Now, I have another video all about digesting proteins. Please watch that one. I don't want to have to repeat it here. But we've got all of that information, and we know that the stomach acid and the pepsin start to break it down. And when they do break it down, they first of all break it down in what are called peptides. And these are kind of multiple forms of these amino acids stuck together. And recent research has actually shown that they're anti-obesity. So, anti-obesogenic, they don't generate it, don't cause obesity, despite the fact that all of the health authorities say, don't have too much of this because it's got fat in it, and you'll get fat, you'll get diabetes, wrong, wrong. Find me a study anywhere in the world that shows eating chicken skin causes, causes any of these conditions. It doesn't, for the very simple reason. It's got enzymes in it, 
something called alpha amylase blocks it. It blocks alpha amylase. Alpha amylase is the one released in our mouth and um, in our digestive system to break down carbohydrates. And if we break them down really quickly, we get a sugar high. So if you have a, uh, a slice of white bread, you get a high glycemic index, a high GI, a high sugar level in your blood. This, the, the, the peptides in here block the digestion of the sugars and therefore slow, delay, and even prevent you getting the sugar high. Wow, so a bit of chicken on white bread, I don't recommend white bread, but that's the high, gives you the high sugar, slows the digestion and prevents the di full digestion of the bread. So you're actually not getting as many of the calories and you're not getting the sugar high. How fantastic. And then it's got another one they just recently discovered called um, a, a lipase blocker. So these peptides actually stop digesting the fats. Lipase is another word for fats in science. And so it stops the digestion of fats. So all this concern about fats and they haven't even looked into it yet and they now realize that the fats aren't being fully digested so you're not getting all the calories from them how good is that that's why i suggested that they're actually anti-obesogenic so they're not helping you put on weight they're actually helping you maintain a healthy weight and you're getting all the nutrients that i've mentioned up here then the second part is that these peptides have also shown to be prebiotic so they help stimulate the microbiome in the large intestine to be healthy, more biodiverse, and be helpful for you. So it's got benefits. The unfortunate thing, when they're, when they're blaming saturated fats and they're blaming chicken skins, they're not looking at the big picture. They're looking at one little component and saying, oh, it must be bad for you. Ridiculous, that's really bad science. That is fundamentally bad science. You've got to look at the big picture. All of this information took me about um, 30 to 40 or so studies to go in, read, and then follow the links. So it's prebiotic. It's beneficial for the gut microbiome. And we know how important that is. I've got dozens of, of videos on that one. It actually blocks the ACE inhibitors. Now these ACE inhibitors, these are uh, angiotensin converting enzymes, are the ones that actually lead to high blood pressure. So the authorities thought was that if you have this food, the, the collagen in the chicken skins or the chicken skins with the fat and the collagen, you're going to end up with high blood pressure. Wrong. They've actually got ingredients in them to actually lower or at least maintain the blood pressure without causing any adverse effects on blood pressure. So they're antihypertensive. Third, they're also antioxidant. And we know that high blood pressure is caused by oxidation and inflammation, and these ones help reverse it. This is great information, and once you understand this, you go, wow, why don't the authorities look at all this? Now, by the way, when it comes to um, uh, high blood pressure and so on, I, again, I've got a couple of videos on high blood pressure which explain the ACE, uh, the angiotensin-converting enzymes, um, and a whole raft of other conditions that lead to blood pressure. So if you do have high blood pressure, not only have chicken skin, but make sure you watch those videos because it explains the full picture, unlike most people, the authorities, who look at one little component of it. So we've got all those benefits. Now, when the digestion continues further because you've got good stomach acid and good levels to break it down, it actually creates the two, the two ingredients, the two amino acids, glycine and proline, and then that's circulated to various parts of your body. See, we can't digest collagen and it just goes into our body as collagen. It's broken down and then the component parts are re-established in our body. And they're re-established in what's called the fibroblasts. And the fibroblasts are the, these cells in tissues where collagen's needed, muscles, skin, lungs, that big list up there, the arteries, bones, tendons, cartilage, they're all live dynamic tissue. And they've all got these fibroblasts which actually help generate them and create them. But it also needs a couple other ingredients, some minerals, but most importantly, it needs vitamin C. It needs lots and lots of vitamin C. So once you've had the chicken skin, have some vitamin C. Have it with orange juice, have it with a supplement. But vitamin C is critical because then it goes on to form collagen. Uh, by the way, uh, you might remember uh, all the stories of scurvy. Basically, scurvy out in the ocean. Uh, people didn't get enough, the sailors didn't get enough, get enough vitamin C. And as a result of it, they developed all these deteriorating skin and connective tissues. Now, their bones were crumbling, their cartilages were going off, but also their lips, which is the first thing people saw, lips were bleeding and gums were bleeding and teeth were falling out because all the connective tissue was being 
broken down and lost and it wasn't being replaced because of not enough vitamin C. So you add, the, you add the chicken skin along with the vitamin C and you end up with the collagen. And this collagen is fantastic for reconstructing, helping reconstructing lots of the connective tissue in your body. Now, if you want the added advantage of that, then you do what your grandparents did. And what your grandparents did was literally had chicken soup. Or if you uh, go to any Asian country now, you will have chicken foot soup or a bone broth. And essentially what they are is they've got other ingredients, a chicken foot, it's got the skin, it's got the bones, it's got the cartilage, it's got everything in there. You can even throw in the feathers too because that's got collagen in it. And literally, when you cook them up in a broth, when you cook them up into a soup, the collagen is released, the glycine and the proline is, is, is partly released, it's broken down, and the collagen is another one of the collagen part two or type two. And this adds on because we've got one and three up here, and this one's a little bit uh, used in, in bones and other areas of the body because there are five common ones, that collagen types that we use in our body. And in addition, when you have the chicken foot soup or a good chicken soup made from the bones, not the meat, throw away the meat, have the, but joking, don't throw away the meat, but cook the bones up into this, into this broth. You also get hyaluronic acid, and you get chondroitin sulfate, which are other supplements for your bones and your joints, anti-osteoarthritis, anti-osteoporosis, all the, the joints will benefit from you having it, the chicken skin and the rest of the chicken as well. Now, they've known that literally for thousands of years. That's why your grandparents had the chicken soup, real chicken soup, not chicken noodle soup. That stuff doesn't have any uh, nutrients in it, just the noodles and a bit of flavoring and uh, lots of um, MSG, etc. But when you have this and you combine it with it, you've got a great combination collagen, which a lot of people pay a lot of money for when they buy their little containers with collagen in it, because guess what? In there, chicken collagen goes into those containers and then they resell it back to you. Why not just get it from the chicken skin? Eat more chicken skin, it's good for you and it's good for your heart.